Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. We are, boy, this is the scary part of the off season because we have three days left. Three days for the team to impress upon everything that is going to be the 24, 2024 team and the importance of being ready when training camp starts and to do the final installs for the team. And of course, we all know that C.D. Lamb is the only one who is not there. And Mike McCarthy had his press conference about two hours ago and jokingly seemed kind of testy, so to speak. Uh, the questions about C.D. Lamb, of course, came of, uh, right away, the very first question. Um, and I, I tell you what, let's listen in to Mike McCarthy on what he said, and we'll, we'll react to it, because there were a couple questions about C.D. Lamb and going forward. With that, I'll take your questions, David. Mike, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Um, CD's status, and it, have you had any conversations with him or expect him here to see him before? Uh, CD's not here today, so. And I'll tell you what, you guys do such a hell of a job with attendance, so I'll make sure you have some work to do at practice. So, <laughs> see, that's your one for the day. Okay? <laughs> we'll see how good you are. So. See, you, you saw, you, you, see, I think this is the way I take that. Mike McCarthy, you know, visibly is not happy. And he realized, I'm showing that I'm not happy about the situation. Let me try and turn this around by making a joke of it. L watch again. Listen to this again. Here to see him before. Uh, CD's not here today, so. And I'll tell you what, you guys do such a hell of a job with attendance, so I'll make sure you have some work to do at practice. So he so, tried to turn this thing around. He that's your one for the up. day. Okay? <laughs> we'll see how good you are. So. What's, what's different between OTAs and minicamp? What will you be doing differently? How, how would it look differently at all? Uh, the roles are the same, you know, as far as the, you know, how you can practice and what you can do. The only thing we're going to do differently is we're going we're to have the helmets on for periods one and two. Other than that, the structure of what you, what you saw uh, in the OTAs will be very, very similar. You know, it's, um, you know, we're today and tomorrow, we'll really complete the install phase for us, you know, and as I've always stated, the most important part of these off-season program uh, sessions is connecting the young players with the old players, so and that's really what I'm focused on to make sure that we get all the different things that they that you know they see at this point uh, these are these are heavy installs uh, there's there's a lot there's a little more moving parts uh, to seven and eight uh, five six seven eight are are challenging so uh, we just really 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 want to maximize this time with the rookies and in our in our veterans so that's that's what we want to get done this week you can back to city for a second um, not I knew you've always talked about your respect people have in their business does the fact that your office is the same, make it easier for him to miss OTA Dominican because he's already kind of rested with you guys, which you guys did last year. Well, I think when you talk about veteran players, um, you know, every offseason program that I've been a part of, I mean, the, the veteran players, you know, the, you know, some guys have a workout bonus of 85 percent. So, I mean, all these things are factored into the planning of the offseason program because at the end of the day, it's about connecting the young players to, to the veteran group. That, that's always been the number one goal for my approach, how the training, how the teaching, everything's set up. So, uh, you know, you have veteran players that may miss or not miss. You know, but it's all, they're all engaged. You know, every one of our players, we, we've had an incredible off-season program. I mean, the engagement has been 100%, um, but the quality of work, um, you know, within the, you know, the, the realm that we can practice in and work in, um, I, I feel great about it. And I think we can have an excellent day today and tomorrow. I mean, it, it'll be, you know, we definitely would be above the line of what we're trying to accomplish. So, yeah, so CD and, and, and all those types of situations, he's in a business situation you know everybody's engaged and I, I'm, I, I have no you know no qualms or 
don't lack no confidence as far as you know our guy our vets being ready my, like my, my focus is because you know right now like the, the younger players are passing the the written part of it they're mm -hmm. able to get through the walkthrough and you know but let's be honest we're not going to really really know until we get to training camp and see them really go full speed put pads on and things like that so yeah i mean it's always been about crossing thresholds of your your teaching program and so forth so yeah for all the veteran players what you know they've been engaged and um, we'll be in a great spot. It's really about the young guys. Mike Todd, Archer with ESPN. How has CD been engaged away from there? Has it been in similar meetings that you guys have had with Mike yeah. and things like that? He's well, been engaged. I can, I can just tell you that. Yeah. He's been engaged. And then That's my fine. word for the day. I said it six times. So <laughs> engaged, engaged. Engaged, yeah. engaged. And, you and can see he's a little bit Mike, you expect him to jump in and do everything as if you've been around? He's here. engaged also. So. <laughs> it's a different question. What the hell? You're not going to practice today? Or what? You're you got lunch date or what? You expect him to do well, check him out. Yeah, check him out. You can see he's a little perturbed. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, Mike, what is the next step for CD? You don't talk about players taking like a second year jump. What, yeah. what is the next thing for a guy that's produced the way he has? Boy, he's, he's played at such a you know high level. I mean, just really maintaining the standard um, and, and what a standard he established last year. So. I think just you know playing to the standard that he's created, and uh, you know, and we all have a responsibility too to make sure those opportunities are in place, but also, boy, what opportunities it creates for others because of the standard that he's established. And then uh, back to Larry Allen, do you have a an interaction, something you saw or heard from another player or coach that will always stand out to you about Larry? Yeah, everybody always just talked about his power, and then he, he, like just seeing the video, and even you know Mike Zimmer shared some some personal thoughts on him too, because you know Mike and Greg Ellis were both with with Larry back in the '90s and the early 2000s. So you know you always you see the you know videos of the bench press and so forth, and you know the clip against the I think it was against the Saints, uh, I think Sunday or Monday Night Football where he runs down to you know potential pick six. So you know you see those things, and that's you Incredible know that's what, you know I, what I remember about about him. But to hear them talk about him, you know, and you know, had the one clip of I think it was 700 pounds on a bench press and. Uh, I think it might have been, it was a Rocket Ishmael or something. I mean, like he jumps on his chest, he doesn't even have the thing racked yet. You're like, oh, did that just happen? You know, so uh, for as impressive as, as he was with his strength, but also, but, you know, but Mike had a really, really cool perspective on him. And, and uh, you know, and I thought it was important for him to share with the players. So uh, just very, very well respected here in the building. Definitely. So here's my take on this is, you know, Mike McCarthy is putting on the face. Oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And he's sitting here, you know, inside he has to be a little upset and perturbed because his number one weapon here, they're, you know, just screwing around, taking their time. The Cowboys need to get CD Lamb's deal done now. There is no excuse. There is nothing reason why you wait at this point. It isn't, you know, you know, and we understand and understand that it's a two way street. OK, and if you are CeeDee Lamb, you don't want to sit here and sign six months ago and take a low deal. You wanted to wait till after Justin Jefferson was there and the Cowboys, of course, they want to know what the market is. Well, we've got both of those parameters done. You got a coach that you're putting on the hot seat and saying you got to perform, but you're hamstringing him because you haven't signed his people. It makes no sense whatsoever. Well, we'll see where we go with this and so on. And hopefully sooner than later, we get this thing done. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. Motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amore Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's ass! He's stupid! I fire his ass! I fire his ass! I mean, how he's got to be stupid. What are you doing? You just let Dallas take him. You 